I want to talk in an actionable way to you all and back about an important aspect of life, one that you should take note of and as you perceive it in others, one that we desperately need in our society, in leaders of business, uh, government, and institutions, and one that is a, can be a deep component of your spiritual life. We live in a very connected age, you know, on the internet. Uh, now you have the internet on your phone, you have the internet in your pocket. You can download books, all the books just about that you ever want to read from archive.org or Z Library or any of these other places, not to mention all the books on Amazon that are available on a Kindle device. An ocean of articles and journals, uh, just a click away. Uh, many tables of data, uh, are online, uh, data of facts and figures. Um, college, college courses are available online, maybe dozens or hundreds of universities. Many are free. Uh, you can, the entire really body of knowledge of all humanity is available uh, on, uh, for almost no cost on your smartphone. And now we're limited by our ability to absorb this information. Uh, I'm always struck by the fact that uh, all kinds of people have smartphones, but they, it, it doesn't seem to matter that they can use it to read fabulous books and learn things. They're, uh, they're focused on what else is on TikTok. But now our ability uh, to find out facts and figures is limited by search technology. Previous, in previous times, even kings and emperors were limited by lack of information and the speed at which information was conveyed. You know, we had to have scribes, it used to be a profession, uh, who copied pages laboriously, letter by letter, and then scrolls were carried by horse, horse, horseback or uh, in quantity by ox cart. Uh, and then on a ship, the ship had to wait to sail for good weather. Uh, so information flowed very slowly. If you really wanted to read a lot of books, you had to travel to the library. Uh, only when it can be sufficiently understood does information then become knowledge. And only when a person learns to integrate knowledge in, uh, with sound principles and their experience does knowledge uh, even qualify to become wisdom. And then wisdom must guide action. And the title of this sermonette uh, miss, uh, is what is wisdom? What is wisdom? And if we ask that question of the search engines of the great Google, on the top of you will get variations of some simple answers. One of them is uh, wisdom is the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment, the quality of being wise, which I guess in some ways is a circular definition, or the soundness of an action or decision with regard to the application of experience, knowledge, and good judgment, or else the body of knowledge and principle that develops within a specified society or period. So it's kind of a body of wisdom. But while these are all true in their own way, it, it actually illustrates the point I want to make uh, and help you young people there in the back understand wisdom in the fullest sense of the concept. On a web page with that search engine answer, down below it was a, another question. What is the real meaning of wisdom? Uh, so even people in the secular technology world find that there is more to wisdom than meets the eye. If you drill down on that question, what is the real meaning of wisdom? You can see that a lot of people have uh, wisdom uh, without necessarily wanting to do the work to attain wisdom. This world seeks really only so much wisdom while revering people who appear to have it up to a point. Some movies feature an older and enigmatic figure, somewhat mysterious, who shares their wisdom with the main characters, even when strangely speak they do. And publications uh, sometimes uh, start each chapter with a little bit of wisdom from some sage of the past. And some people who are professionally good at wisdom are actually uh, appear on, on talk shows and are interviewed on television. And people write books, highly paid speakers, uh, frequent guests on TV programs like Meet the Press. What, uh, but recall that in ancient Israel, ancient Israel murdered the prophets 
because they spoke too much of God's wisdom. People didn't want to hear it. And of course, in the end, at the end time, Satan will attempt to murder God's people for similar reasons. And there, is some, there are some amazingly smart people in the world. I once had a business lunch with a university official and his wife. She was the, uh, he was the head of an academic department. She was a military officer in the Air Force Reserves. She was also a physician. And her business card had her credentials on it, and they went around to the backside because she had so many. These are absolutely amazing people. But we need such people. We need such people to uh, run our institutions, to help us do the big things uh, in society, such as uh, running a university or building a safe nuclear reactor. But knowledge is not wisdom, as we found out during the pandemic. And again, this leads me to the main point I want to refer to you, for you young people. Please turn to the parable of the unjust steward, which is found in Luke chapter 16. The parable of the unjust steward, Luke, Luke chapter 16. And I'll, I'll read uh, uh, verses 1 through 6. Uh, Jesus uh, also said to his disciples, There was a rich man who was uh, informed of accusations that his manager was wasting his assets. And so he called his manager in and said to him, this, uh, What is this I hear about you? Basically, then he called for an audit of his administration. Turn in your account because you are no longer my manager. And the manager said to himself, what should I do since my master is taking my position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig and I am too ashamed to beg. I know uh, what to do. So when I uh, am put out of management, someone will welcome me into their houses. So he contacted his manager's debtors one by one. This is in verse five. And he asked, uh, the first, how much do I owe? My, how much do you owe my master? And the man replied, "A hundred measures of olive oil." And the manager said to him, "Take down your bill and write it down to fifty." Now, in verse eight, it says, uh, "Jesus says." Then summarizes this: the master commended the dishonest manager because he acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their contemporaries than the people of light. This parable shows that a person who is skilled in the wisdom of this world, uh, those uh, are, sh they're shrewd in their ways and they protect their ad and advance their own interests even uh, at the expense of moral principles, even at the expense of being dishonest in the process. Let me point out that wisdom is different than judgment. Judgment is on the tactical side of dealing with an issue, while wisdom is on the strategic side. And I want to show the difference here. Is strategy is your approach to addressing the issue before you, like when you, a coach decides who to put in the game and what play to run after they run this play. Now, judgment guides how you plan to successfully execute your tactics. But most important for the purposes of the message today, wisdom is at the highest level, how you broadly structure your approach and issues to life. In the parable of the unjust steward, the worldly wisdom side of the steward was that his career was in jeopardy because his master's assets were discovered to be at risk. His strategy was to immediately settle all debts. His tactic was to meet with each debtor in person and pleasantly discuss the debt and find out how much the man could actually pay and then say, well, that's what you'll pay. For this, he was praised. But in essence, he was dishonest because he bought the favor of each debtor at the expense of his master's uh, receipts. So he hoped to carry favor so that if he should be find, found to be homeless, that his debtors would uh, have pity on him. Uh, as I get closer to the date uh, of the speaking schedule, when I start to get serious about my assignment, I always start by asking God what topic he wants me to consider. 
I often pray a very simple prayer, sometimes several times a day, saying, Father, what topic do you want me to speak on? And that, that in seeking, uh, that's seeking wisdom from above. And when I start to consider the topics that come to mind that will be beneficial, then there are a number of ideas that come to mind, and when I get clarity on a topic, I have to use judgment to decide how to drive the, port, the point home, and that is the strategy. Judgment always plays a key role in deciding exactly how to phrase things as I'm composing the sermonette, and that's tactics. So I hope you young people can see how this descends from broader wisdom into strategy and then into tactics. And that's uh, useful in all aspects of your life, your physical and your spiritual life. The role of wisdom is to uh, clarify a fruitful goal. When you start out with a fruitless or poorly informed goal, and then you execute with massive force and a lot of smoke and fire and energy and resources, you might end up with something that was a total waste of time and you end up worse off than when you started. And the Russian invasion of Ukraine comes to mind as an example of this. This is also why AI at its present implementation will disappoint a lot of people. Those who design such systems do not understand wisdom and they don't even seek it for themselves. They seek technical knowledge, which is not guided by wisdom at all. Now there are many passages in scriptures that refer to wisdom. One source uh, claimed there were 222 passages. Now I'd like to eventually turn to James chapter three, uh, but uh, James chapter three, but some of these passages are I can read from Proverbs. They're very short, uh, but there's a distinction I want to make. And uh, in Proverbs 21:20, the the passage says, "There is a desire, uh, there is desirable treasure and olive oil in the dwelling of the wise." But a, fruit, uh, but a foolish person devours all he has. A con uh, in distinction or contrary to Proverbs 2.6, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth he, uh, comes knowledge and understanding. So these are really two aspects of the same concept. One is more wisdom that's more oriented at the, the daily life, and the other is more oriented at eternal life. Now consider uh, who the wise are that Jesus refers to in Matthew 11, verse 25. And Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them, the little children. And who, uh, what kind of wisdom or who uh, is Paul referring to in 1 Corinthians 3.18? He says, no, let no one deceive himself for if anyone thinks himself to be wise among you in this age, let him become a fool in order that he may become wise. So here's two different types of wisdom or two different orientations. And now I want to move to James chapter 3, uh, starting in verse uh, 13. And I'll just read this paragraph, James 3.13. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, he uh, should show his works done in the greatness that wisdom brings. But if you have better, uh, bitter jealousy and, and selfishness in your hearts, do not boast and tell lies against the truth. Such wisdom does not come from above, but is earthly, natural, and demonic. For where there is jealousy, where there is jealousy and selfishness, there is disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, accommodating, full of mercy, good fruit, impartial, and not hypocritical. And the fruit that con consists of righteousness is planted in peace among all who make peace. So clearly God wants his people to learn wisdom from every positive example in their lives so that their lives can be peaceful and prosperous as circumstances allow. But above all, he wants his people to be attuned to his wisdom and ways to ask for wisdom, to be receptive to where it leads them when he speaks to them, to adopt it, to internalize it, and that uh, as far as possible, practice it. And this is the most profitable 
kind of wisdom for you.